everyone, Aqualaha Boy Rocks here. Forgive the respirator lines on my face. I've been sanding thunder eggs, so those will go away. Just bear with me. Thought I'd shoot another video while I had some light here and the weather was nice. This is mainly going to be an equipment video, even though we will be cutting this what I hope to be a really nice piece of agatized coral. I've had these turn out duds before. I think this is going to be just a nice solid piece. But it's mainly about the saw that we're going to be cutting it on. And this saw is one that people seem to love or hate. I have read on forums people talking about taking them out in their driveway and just destroying them. Which I think is a darn shame because it's one of my favorite saws. It's a saw you've seen before, the Lorton LS14 drop saw, and I got it mainly so that I could cut some strange shaped rocks or reach up here, grab a thunder egg, some round rocks that are really difficult to clamp in a lot of saws. I was able to easily modify this one. It isn't perfect, but it clamps these rocks pretty well. The blade I've got on it works really well. So let's cut this and get over and look at the saw and talk our way through it. Okay, forgive the various detritus you see in the background and just my messy shopkeeping, but this is the Lorton LS14 saw. I have on it a Highland Park Agate Eater blade, which is just perfect for this setup. This clamp is the standard clamp. I've set up another one over here. Kind of like it as an extra to help me clamp those strange sized rocks. Just do a little pan around here. Nothing too fancy in space age on this ancient saw, but everything works with a purpose. So we'll get into it starting with the motor. Standard blower motor set up here. What came on here was a third horsepower 1725. That is plenty. Zoom in here, you'll see the mounts. There's, of course, a little play there, so you can adjust your tension. This one came set up with a switch on the motor, the power cord going to the wall, and a separate cord coming out that's on the switch so that you can run your water oil circulator pump. We'll look at that again in a minute. Pretty standard bearings. Now this threaded rod here is very important. Let's hop over to this side. We have an adjustment here. So I can sidestep the blade from side to side and line it up just perfectly with the rock. Standard blade shaft bearings. You can see it saw came with a little rust. This rod here adjusts as a stop for the blade. So I can adjust that to whatever height I want the cut to stop at. Very handy. I have a uh, high-tech soup can full of lead here. I can use that as a weight on the arm if I need more weight on my cut. Extra leverage wherever I put it, depending on how much I need. So that's very handy. We've got our coolant valves here. And then there's a line on either side to deliver the coolant directly to the blade. Very useful. And 
In my case, I have a kind of a custom coolant set up with oil. I was running this saw with water, same blade, it wouldn't cut worth beans, change to mineral oil, and it cuts amazing. That's the only thing I changed on it that changed the performance. So I have drilled a hole in the side here, have a piece of tubing coming down to a bucket. This is just a settling bucket. You can see I've got lots of sediment in there. And then a drain here coming out of this bucket. Piece of tubing. And it's time to clean because I have a fair amount of sediment in my bucket with my motor. I've got a little 115 volt pump here. Hose coming out. Deliver the cleaner coolant back in and around it goes again. One of the more annoying things about this saw, it's a very heavy frame, of course, with the motor. And then there's a separate piece here. You see all that mud down there for the pan. You can see how that's two pieces. Well, without two people, it's very difficult to lift this up and do anything about cleaning out that bottom pan. So that's the saw. Love the adjustability on it. I'm going to go get that piece of coral and chuck it up and show you that cutting. One other detail I forgot to mention about this little customization is this piece of plywood. So I drilled the piece of plywood, and I probably need to make a different one, put holes in a couple of different places, and that just lets me change the point at which I clamp on to the rock and helps me handle different sized rocks. Okay, now I've got the rock chucked up in here. Let's lower the saw down. I decided to try and split this down the middle for a specimen rather than slabbing it. Blade looks pretty much right on. I think I want to go to the right just a little bit. So pick this back up. Okay, and give that just a crank to the right. You can kind of see here, first place the blade touched all that moss right here. And now where it sits, so you can adjust that however you want to. And I think I'm ready to turn it on and give it a cut. Okay, once I turn this on, you will not be able to hear me. So I'll just let the machine do the talking. Alright, here we are, up through a rock, alright, we've cut through our rock, let's loosen this up and see what we've got. Well, I hope you enjoyed the 
overview of the LS14 drop saw, 14 inch drop saw. I got what I considered a really good deal on that. I had to drive about 120 miles to go pick it up. But anytime I do that, I make a day of it. I'll go, in this case, went to the beach, saw some relatives, ate some good food. And make it worth the trip besides just going and getting the item. And if you're wondering about the rock, yes, I'm going to leave you hanging. It was way better than I expected it to be. It was an awesome, awesome rock. So I'm going to just cut that off and have an actual separate video on it. Maybe make some cabochons, different things. So again, hope you enjoyed the LS14. I'll see you next time.